My name is Grace. I'm a homemaker. I married my husband Scott after a workplace romance. Our marriage life is going smoothly with no complaints and we get along well every day. I often hear that after marriage, many people struggle with dealing with their spouse's relatives. I especially hear stories about the difficulties of dealing with sisters-in-law. But I got along very well with Scott's sister, Laura, and we often went shopping and traveling. I have a sister of my own, but I don't get along well with Emma, and often thought it would be nice if Laura was my real sister. But then one year, Laura passed away due to illness. The day I received the news of her death, I was so sad that I couldn't eat, and my tears didn't stop until the day of the funeral. And on the day of the funeral, my husband, who had gone to the funeral home before me, suddenly called me. What's the matter? When I answered the phone, he was talking fast in a harsh, angry voice. Do not show up to the funeral. Run to your parents' house. I'll explain the situation later. I arrived at my parents' home, not understanding why I couldn't go to the funeral of my sister-in-law, with whom I had been so close. What's the matter? Isn't Laura's funeral today? My parents were surprised by my sudden return with a sad face. I revealed what my husband had told me. Oh, I see. We just got a call from someone claiming to be Scott's relative. They were complaining that you're a terrible person or something, and even threatened to set our house on fire if we don't pay damages. We had no idea what they were talking about, so we thought it was a scam or harassment. There might be something going on. Let's wait to hear from Scott. Just then, my husband, dressed in his morning suit, rushed to our house in his car. Scott bowed deeply and said, I'm sorry for the unforgivable act committed by my relatives. It seems they haven't arrived here yet. But just in case, let's go to the police. I couldn't comprehend my husband right away, who was gasping for air. So I decided to calm him down and ask for details. Laura's suicide note was full of accusations against you. No way. It's true. It says things like, Grace told me to die, and she was violent towards me, and it asked for revenge. The relatives who took it seriously are trying to extort you with an outrageous amount of damages. This place is also dangerous because they know where it is. Let's go to the police right now. He confessed with a pale face. I collapsed in shock by the front door, but was able to regain my composure with my mother's support. My sister-in-law said that about me? That's impossible. I've racked my brains, but I have absolutely no memory of doing anything like that. My husband comforted me, rubbing my shoulder, saying, Calm down, it's okay. It's all lies. Maybe it's my mom who dislikes you and rewrote everything. Your sister-in-law always seemed happy talking about you as if you were her real sister. It can't be true. But I wondered if it's really that easy to fabricate or alter a will. Even I, with my average knowledge of law, understand that if I were to tamper with such personal documents, I'd be immediately held accountable. Anyway, because they've called, those relatives may be heading here. Rushed by Scott, I left my parents' house. Arriving at the police station, I immediately submitted a recording of the abusive phone call that had been left at my parents' house in a video from my smartphone showing relatives becoming irate when my mother-in-law abruptly read a suspicious will at the funeral home. The police said that since there was no actual harm yet, they would increase patrols in the neighborhood and wait. Learning that having consulted the police in advance would be beneficial if anything happened in the future, I felt a little relieved. But as soon as I returned to my parents' house, something happened that blew away my relief. As my husband was parking the car and getting out, there was some commotion at the front door. Approaching cautiously, I saw a stranger, a middle-aged man and woman, shouting, It's your fault! at my sister, whose cheek was red from being slapped. My father's beloved golf club was squashed on the ground, and fragments of broken vases and ornaments were scattered about. Presumably, my husband's relatives had stormed to my parents' house while we were consulting with the police. Uncle and aunt, my wife hasn't done anything. I'm calling the police for hurting my wife's sister. As my enraged husband shouted, he called the police. At his words, his uncle and aunt flinched for a second. Wait, a sister? They seemed to realize that I, standing next to my husband, was the real Grace, and that the one they had harmed was my sister. But without any signs of remorse, they approached me again with the golf club in hand. Using a body double? You're a sneaky woman, just like the will said. How dare you bully our beloved little Laura? It's because of you that she suffered mentally and her illness progressed. However, my father, hearing the commotion from the violence towards my sister and the sounds of things breaking, 
rushed over and grabbed my uncle's hand and shouted at him. You weren't satisfied with making the impertinent phone call? And now, how dare you lay a hand on my eldest daughter? I had never seen my father, who normally was gentle, looking so terrifying it made me shudder. My uncle and aunt-in-law seemed unsatisfied and argued with my father for a while, but eventually the police arrived and took them away in their police car for questioning. Grace, are you okay? I was dazed by all that had happened, but my father's words brought me back to reality. I'm sorry, sister, for getting you hurt because of me. I rushed to my injured sister to apologize. My dad, whose energy had vanished just as quickly as it came, was asking my mom to bring an ice pack, looking crestfallen as he said, I'm sorry I couldn't protect you, especially with your wedding coming up. He tried to ice my sister's cheek with it. My sister grabbed the ice pack from him and, cooling her cheek herself, said, Huh? It's not your fault. You're quiet and an introvert, but you're a decent person and got along well with my deceased sister-in-law. This is physical damage, right? I can sue that uncle and aunt, so I made some money. That's how my sister always is, cool as a cucumber. But maybe she's just pretending to be calm for my sake, I thought, feeling grateful. And seeing how she stood by me after I got married, believing in me despite the false accusations, made me feel truly reassured. That's why I couldn't forgive my violent uncle and aunt who caused my sister pain, nor myself who had let her get hurt in the first place. That night, my husband said to me, I'll go get evidence, stay here, let me know if anything happens and left me to go to his parents' house. I was anxious while he was gone, but apparently word got around about my uncle and aunt-in-law's unreasonable violence among the relatives, and no one came to my parents' house after that. Later, we arranged a meeting. My parents, my sister, my husband and in-laws, and several relatives, including my uncle and aunt-in-law, gathered at my husband's parents' house. It was a somewhat large house. My uncle and aunt-in-law seemed to understand their positions a bit, but they were still under the delusion that they were right demanding an apology with absurd logic like, If you admit to the bullying written in the suicide note, we'll let you off the hook, so we'd like you not to file a report either. Just then, Thirty thousand dollars! My sister, who had been quiet, spoke up. Oh, what did you say? When my uncle-in-law glared at her with a sour face, she said, If you give me thirty thousand dollars, I will give up on filing a report. I can't concentrate on my work because you hit me so hard. Hand over $30,000 to cover everything, including the golf club and things you broke. She said nonchalantly as she operated her smartphone. My uncle's face turned bright red and he started to yell. What? You're making a ridiculous claim just because you got punched once. You're brazen. You sisters are the same. In the end, he lashed out at my parents saying, Don't you feel pathetic as parents for raising such shameless sisters? My mother, while calm, responded resolutely. With all due respect, both sisters are adults. They are expressing their opinions as capable individuals, not as children. Isn't it only natural to respond to rudeness with rudeness? I can't imagine the fear, pain, and indignation of being suddenly punched. Anyway, oh, isn't the suicide note more serious than what happened to me? My sister asked, this time while yawning. She was seemingly uninterested in the squabbling over her situation. Yes, the cause of all this was the possible tampering with the suicide note, which led my uncle and aunt-in-law and other relatives of my husband to take outrageous actions. So, does that mean you did it, Mom? My husband turned to his mother and pressed her. My mother-in-law, who had been fidgeting, flinched very obviously. Well, I'm getting senile and my memory's a bit fuzzy. She tried to gloss over the situation with a simpering tone. Ignoring her, my husband spread out a piece of paper. This is my sister-in-law's real suicide note. My mother had written in her diary of the place she hid it, and I found it. She forged a fake note full of lies that made it seem like my wife bullied my sister, and she read it aloud to our relatives, making them believe it. Who's the fool here? My husband said, suppressing his anger and sounding genuinely disappointed. Mom, you wrote terrible things in your diary, wishing my sister's illness on my wife instead. I can't consider you my mother anymore. With a cold gaze, my husband glared at his own mother. Before his eyes, my mother-in-law eventually became quiet and finally broke into tears. My father-in-law, who had been quietly listening, said, It's my fault for not realizing what kind of person my wife is. Son, you don't have to deal with this family or these relatives anymore. You go live far and happily. I'll keep an eye on my wife and make sure she doesn't see you guys again. That's the least I can do to make amends. 
My husband nodded at these words and turned to his aunt and uncle who had been silent. Please pay the $30,000 you offered earlier, otherwise we'll take all the evidence and really file a police report. I'd prefer that, but it seems that's not what you want. The aunt and uncle trembled, glaring at my sister. To give $30,000 to such a bratty girl. Yay, I can buy a V-brand bag and a C-brand golf club set. Lucky me. My sister grinned and had a triumphant expression on her face. I didn't like her bad personality, but this time there was more to her happiness. My father had his golf clubs broken, my mother's face of flowers was broken, and I was involved in unreasonable trouble. It seemed that she was deliberately speaking in an ungraceful manner so that the three of us would feel relieved. Ignoring all of this, my mother-in-law clung to my husband's leg and cried. You're the only one left for me, my dear son. But my husband's heart no longer opened up to her. Then why didn't you care about my sister at all? Her suicide note was switched with a fake one, wasn't it? No, it's not like that. Just listen to me. Enough already. How low can you go? My father-in-law thundered at his wife, who still tried to push her own story. Ah, oh, I'm done with this. Let's go, everyone. We'll talk about the money later. Goodbye. My sister quickly stood up, looking down on my mother-in-law. She walked past the bewildered relatives and confidently and gracefully headed towards the entrance. My parents followed her and my husband took my hand and led me out of the house. I still remember the complicated smile on his face when he said, Even though she's like that now, she used to be a normal mom. When we came home from school, she'd greet us and give us snacks. It's a little sad that we won't be coming back to this house anymore. A week later, I was slowly starting to regain my composure and I decided to ask my husband about the real will. He said, I was actually waiting until you were smiling again and spread out the real will before me. I adore you, Grace. I had a hard time with my illness going in and out of the hospital quite often. I felt that my mother's interest in me was not as strong as her attachment to my brother. My father's affection was always apparent, but you, Grace, being a girl too and close in age, were my true confidant. Because you are my emotional support, I can keep living, no matter how hard it gets. That's something I feel every day. My parents have a considerable fortune, so I want you and Scott to inherit all of my estate. If it goes to my mother, she would just blow through it quickly. I know my father would understand. I hope it can contribute to your happiness. I couldn't help but hug the will and cry. Go ahead and cry your heart out today, my husband said as he put his arms around my shoulder to calm me down. From that day on, I decided to smile and live my life for my sister-in-law. I will carefully save her inheritance until the day I really need it. Later, my sister settled matters with my husband's aunt and uncle for $30,000. She immediately bought things and sent them a list of the items in a letter titled, A Thank You Note for the $30,000. It's a very Emma-like approach, but maybe that's not enough to clear the grudge from the pain of being punched in earnest. As a side note, my relationship with my sister improved a little after this incident and she started inviting me to go out for meals together. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law became emotionally unstable and aged rapidly. Her paranoia got worse, and she mistook a stranger for me, yelling, It's your fault Scott left, which led to police involvement. Though she was a first-time offender and her mental state was taken into consideration, resulting in a suspended sentence, she became widely known as a dangerous person. My father-in-law, true to his promise, did not abandon her and continued to take care of her without letting her come to our place. My husband and I, having cut ties with his relatives, are now living a peaceful life. Looking back, it was a seriously terrifying experience. I feel sorry for my father-in-law, who didn't know anything about it, but I still can't forgive my mother-in-law for trampling on her own daughter's feelings. My husband and I will slowly walk along this long road ahead of us together, for my sister-in-law who longed for our happiness.